In today's show, it's a mock draft. It's amazingly on ESPN. It's for an ESPN points league, and it's for Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. People have been asking for it. I've been asking them to not play on ESPN. But here we are with an ESPN Points League mock draft. There are players, that if you're playing on ESPN, you might not be able to add because they don't exist in their database because that is how much care they put into fantasy basketball. But that shouldn't matter too much for this draft unless you're looking to draft Jamal Kane, who's not available at the time of me recording this. And you shouldn't probably draft him in 12s. We're going to do a 12-team, as I said, standard ESPN points league mock draft. I believe I'm picking it pick one. We'll see how it all goes. Um... Yeah, and there's going to be a uh, another head-to-head nine-cap mock draft today, part of my All-12 series. I just named that then, the All-12, picking from every spot in the first round. I'll pick a number nine in that later today. There was a Do Not Draft list show for um, points leagues earlier today as well, so plenty of stuff coming. Um, we're going to get into talking about that in just a second. Before I do that, though, I'm going to tell you that um, if you're looking to place a job, an ad for a job, what's the... There's only one option, really, and it is LinkedIn Jobs. Every potential new hire, it can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You have to be, and you want to be, 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go on there and create your job. Whatever it is you're looking for, um, LinkedIn's going to have it, and they do all these stuff with like screening questions, so you just don't have to sift through all the all the garbage to find the person that's right for you. Saving time, we know, equals saving money, and that is exactly what LinkedIn Jobs can provide for you. So, go across to LinkedIn Jobs, um, create that uh, application, add your job, add the purple hiring frame, hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Use the screening questions, makes it easier to focus on the people that you need with the right skills. And it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And while you're doing that, you can head across to betonline.net, the number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis and articles on every game that you can find. And with the NBA season starting back up, they're going to have all of that stuff covered as well. BetOnline remains your continued source for all sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. We've got a Monday night game for Week 5 in the NFL. Raiders, Chiefs, the total is 51.5. The Chiefs might drop 51.5 on their own against the Raiders. So you can go check out that. And they'll have week six stuff up there as well really, really soon. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the Major League Baseball playoffs, which my Toronto Blue Jays are no longer a part of. MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. Okay. So that is going to take us now into uh, this mock draft. Um, so... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) It's been a long time since I've been in an ESPN draft room, so uh, we're going to do it now. Let's unpause this draft. I am picking at pick one, and I am uh, at pick one going to take, of course, the big fella. Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic goes at number one. Big, big Chungus, big Chungus, big Chungus. At number two. This is so hard to like read what's actually going on here. So I'm going to change that board over there on the right-hand side so you can see the picks go off. It goes Jokic, it goes Giannis, it goes Doncic. This is such a terrible setup. Of course, it's what it is. It's ESPN. Lamelo Ball goes at number four. That feels early. That's ridiculously early. What are we doing? Um, 
Yeah, that's crazy. Now, you're going to see me on this video, and this is how, unfortunately, because ESPN hides their info because they're, they're too cool for us, that to use the draft tracker on Basketball Monster, you need to go ahead and do some copy-paste stuff. Now, you have to be pretty nimble with your fingers to be able to do that, but you're going to see me do it. I might as well do it now. I've got to hit this Pick History tab. I push Control-A, Control-C, all right, select all those guys, and then I go into my draft tracker, which I'm not going to show you because that means you get to see all my projections. So I'm going to put all that in and then that will import the draft. Now, it's not an ideal situation because they removed our access to a bunch of stuff, but that's how we've got to do it. It takes five seconds. Ball goes at four, way too high. Embiid at five, Harden at six, Tatum at seven. Durant is sliding a bit here. Um, Zion should start to go soon. Again, you're looking at, if you're looking at these ESPN ranks, just be aware of what they are. Durant goes at eight. LeBron goes at nine. Now, these are pretty. These are pretty solid picks. Um, I just the only one I don't like is the Lamelo one. Ja Morant goes at ten. Absolutely, he is. Well, actually, no. In an ESPN points league, he's not as good as in a Yahoo points league. I would, and with the risk of his knee issue, I would take him second round. Sorry, so I take that back on Ja. Damian Lillard goes at 11. He is not a good ESPN points league player either. It's too early. Halliburton goes at 12. He yeah, maybe a little bit early. Maybe a little bit early, but not too bad. Cade goes at, what the hell? Cade goes at 13. Um, yeah, it's a no from me. He was 65th in points leagues on ESPN last season. I don't know what we're doing taking him there, but that's cool. We're taking flyers. We're going crazy. We're doing dumb stuff. Why is Trey Young still there? Why is um why is Trey Young still there? That's the question. Well, there he goes. Trey Young goes next with that selection, the second pick in round two. That's pick 14. Okay. Then it goes Siakam. Hmm. I can get behind that. I'm just going to update my draft tracker now. Zion goes next. Okay. Zion next is pretty strong, I think. Obviously, there's risk associated with it. Then after Zion goes Devin Booker. Why is it so hard for websites? Round two, pick five. Just tell me the overall pick, mate. You don't need to tell me what pick and what round it is. Just tell me the overall pick. Steph goes next, which is the right spot for Steph. Um, Paul George, then Kyrie Irving. It's coming up to me with three picks left. I'm going to take Anthony Davis, I think. I'm just going to go re-update this. I know you see that blue flash up on the screen. It's not particularly lovely for you to see. Uh, after Irving went Sabonis, then it went Anthony Davis, and then it's getting to my pick. Why is Towns still there? That's going to be the question I ask. Although he's not a great points league guy for ESPN formats, at least in my projections anyway. He was 12th last season. Um, it is my pick because Towns just went. So that means I'm going to take... I'm going to take Dejounte Murray there. And... Let's just have a quick update of who has been taken. Put it over into my... I'm going to have to be really quick here because I'm on 30-second clock. Um, let's take... De'Aaron Fox. I just avoided a few of the injured guys there. I had Kawhi and Shea as my options at the top, but I didn't go with them, obviously, for those reasons. So I went with DeJounte at the end of round two and Darren Fox. So a couple of uh, guard eligible players. See, th this is another thing that annoys me on ESPN. I can't move these guys around. And when you get to the end of the draft, last pick, if there is an open spot that you've got, they force you to pick that. Now, DeJounte Murray's got point guard, shooting guard eligibility. He should be able to slide into shooting guard. And then Darren Fox should be able to move into point guard. But no, they put Fox at guard. So now I have to draft someone who has shooting guard eligibility. When realistically, I already have that person. Stupid stupid stuff. After Fox goes to Marta Rosen, Bam Adebayo, Shea Igudis alexander Kawhi and Chris Paul need to start coming off here. They, they, they're the guys that we're looking at, I reckon, or they, they should be looking at with these picks. I'm just going to throw Kawhi into my queue because I don't know why he's sliding that far. Shea going before Kawhi is a big, big surprise to me. That was the fourth pick in round three for Shea Gildas alexander I feel like I'm missing something with displaying how these picks go down. Um, after Shea goes Vooch, as you know, I don't play on ESPN. It's Vooch. It's big Vooch. Vooch is it. Vooch a bitch. He goes, then Gobert goes. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. 
Um, yeah, these are like fourth round sort of players, I think. Yeah, Goose Anthony Edwards goes, then Kawhi. Like, that's unbelievable value to get Kawhi there. Are we in... Yeah, we're in the end of round three. Like, that is crazy, Bill. Let's just update my screen, my draft tracker. Okay. So, the top of my board at the moment is Chris Paul, wherever he is on this list. Well, he just went, so I, can't, I guess I can't take him. Then Paul Zingas, Drew Holiday, Brad Beal, Ben Simmons. They're my next group of guys. So let's put Drew Holiday in there. Beal is way down. His ADP is sl slid down. Look at that, 48 is ranked. What the hell? Chris Paul goes ninth pick of the third round. Jimmy Butler goes with the 10th pick of the third round. Scott Barnes is another guy I'm going to look at in my queue. Uh, Paul Zingas needs to start going soon. Where is he on this list? Look how high they got Jamal Murray, 24. My God. Um... That's not my pick. I said, no, it's still 13 picks. This is the last pick of round, second last pick of round three. Darius Garland goes there. And then Evan Mobley goes. So two cabs in a row to finish off round three. Might as well just go update my screen, my draft tracker. Just get all those picks in. So my best available at the moment is Porzingis, Holiday, Beal, Simmons, Barnes. So after Mobley goes Beal, so he's gone. Where is Benny Simmons? I bet he's way down there. He is at 62. So let's throw him in the queue. I wonder if I can get one of those four guys that I've got. After Brad Beal goes Jalen um, Jalen Brown. JB, you've done it again. And that's the second pick of round four. So pick 38 overall. So uh, yeah, this, I don't care. At the top, you tell me what pick number it is. In the summary, you don't tell me what pick number it is. Al. Oh, Team Pappy, you're winding down. You're going to end up with Jalen Brunson? No, Scotland Barnes in round four. I was hoping I would get Scotty Barnes. Me being a big Scott Barnes fan, obviously, I would have taken him there. Drew Holiday still sliding. Porzingis. Like, I've still got my top three here. I am eight picks away. They're the top of my queue. Um, Don Mitchell and Fred Van Vliet are going to be in that list as well. Well, there goes Porzingis out of my queue. He went uh, fourth pick of round four. So seven picks to go. I've got four guys in my, three guys in my queue. I wonder who I end up getting. Why is my queue not updated? I literally just clicked Donovan Mitchell. Why has he not joined my queue? Ah, uh, another ESPN Al. Um, oh, show more, sorry. My bad. That's a Josh Lloyd Al. After Porzingis goes Ingram. Six picks away, four guys in my queue. I'll be, I'm okay with that. I feel good about getting one of those unless there's just a big run. Well, one of them went. Fred Van Vliet went at the sixth pick in round four, pick 42. Zach Levine goes at 44, the skater boy. People are just avoiding Brunson because they know it's dumb. Drew Holiday goes. Oh, I've got three, two, two guys in my queue, three picks left. Am I going to get annoyed? Probably. Drew Holiday goes at 44. Okay. It's pretty good value for Drew, honestly. It's really good value, let's be fair. Team Yoshi. Julius Randle goes. Okay. Okay, at 45. So that means I am hopefully going to get oh, two picks to go. Two guys on my queue. Don't take both of them. Take CJ. Take someone different. Um... All right, come on. Why is Donovan Mitchell sliding this far? This is a surprise, though. He is ranked 50th on their points league rankings. Terry Rogier goes. Okay, could I get both of my guys here? I think one of them is going to go. No, Jalen Brunson goes. Wow. So I am going to get these two players. Ben Simmons at 48. Donovan Mitchell at 49. Okay. I'm pretty good with that. They were the guys, that, you know, they were in that queue. I was waiting for them. All right, all right. I'm feeling that. Donovan Mitchell at 49. Okay. He's done. He's good. Um, top of my queue at the moment is Pirtle, Miles Turner, CJ McCollum. Let's throw CJ across here. Um, Pirtle. And we'll update later on. So, oh, off the board at number 50 goes the delicate dancer, Alperen Shengun. 
It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. I had him down in the 70s on ESPN points. Josh Giddy goes next. I had him. No, he's not far off. That's a, that's an okay pick there. Cousin Kevin Porter Jr. Wow, we are. Wow. Um, actually, you know what? I had him at 56. So it's not that far away. That's at 52. Take that back. Pretty solid stuff. Interesting that CJ is still there. Um, Miles Turner. Oh, DeAndre Ayton is still there. What is going on in this draft? Um, so after Porter goes Pirtle, which I like. Although, of course, there's, there is risk with him. Let's see what happens when things start to really get wild later on in this draft. So that was pick 53 for Jakob Pertl. Pick 54 for Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vasilinovasa. And as you would have seen in my Do Not Draft list, Valanciunas featured heavily. I don't think he's a top 80 player this season. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think he is. Interestingly, Chris Middleton still around. Now, Middleton is not as good of a points league player, but I still got him ranked 50th, and we're at pick 55. So he needs to be... Oh, there goes CJ. I'm not going to get... I'm 16 picks away, so I'm not going to get these guys that I want. But where is Miles Turner? I'm sure, I think he's way down, isn't he? 74. Let's just throw him in the queue. After C... Time is running out. After CJ goes DeAndre Ayton. So my queue just now consists of Turner, who is the top available player for me. And then it is Chris Middleton and then Desmond Bain. They're my top three at the moment. Then Jalen Green, Filipino legend. And then um, Horsecock, Keldon Johnson. Whose horse is that? Let's just throw him into the queue as well. So they're my top four at the moment. After Aiton goes Miles Turner. All right, good pick there at pick 58. Jarrett Allen goes at 59. Filipino legend Jalen Green goes at... Sorry, Jalen Green goes at 59. Allen, 58. Turner, 57. And now we're up to pick 60. So my queue just got knocked out there. Middleton's still there. Okay. Des Bain's still there. Okay. Remember, ESPN's projections here, or this rank, is based on their projected fantasy points. But look how many... They're projecting 78 games played for so many guys. 78 for... Bain. Like, it's some 72 for Jamal Murray. Wow. Uh, Paolo Bunkero rounds out round five at pick 60. Then Nurkic goes at 61. Like, all of these games played are so high. Jordan Poole, 78. Wagner, 77. And that's not to mention some of the other stuff that can get pretty wild with some of their projections. Oh, there Chris Middleton finally goes at pick 62. That's some pretty strong value, I think. I'm going to update my draft board soon, but because I've still got two guys at the top of my queue with Bain and Calden there. Another guy that I'm going to want is D'Angelo Russell. He's near the top of my queue. Des Bain. Well, Russell's gone, so I can't get him. Russ, it goes Middleton, Russell, Bain, and then the headmaster, Jamal Murray. Then Keldon Johnson. All right, so my queue is empty. We'll go and update this board in a... Or my board in a second, but a bunch... Oh, actually, let's do, let's do a sneaky one now. Get myself a little bit prepared for my selection. After Keldon was... Stolen after Calden goes Maga Porter Jr. I think Wendell Carter is going to be someone for me. All right, let's throw him into the queue. We are up in four picks. Wendell, um, Trey Jones, Vassell. After Maga Porter goes Clay. Um, I'm just getting myself sorted with the queue here. All right, so after Clay goes Rowan Barrett at pick 69. And then it goes Larry Markinen at 70. And then I think I'm just going to take Wendell. Well, I'm not certain about that one. Oh, no, you know what I'm going to do? Torres Maxi as well. So it's my pick. So Markinen, then Sexton. I'm going to take Maxi and... I'm going to try and see if Carter slides back around. I'll take Vassell there as well to finish off round six and start round seven. So 72, Maxi, 73, Vassell. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I was trying to play a little bit of the, like, will this guy slide to me game. 
And I didn't think Maxi would. And I don't th- have much difference between him and, say, Wendell. And I hope I can get Wendell on the way back around. Now, I do need a power forward eligible player still. And we know what ESPN is going to think about that. And that is Wendell Carter. And I still need a power forward or just a regular forward eligible player also. After Vassell goes Russell Westbrook. Price of the brick going up. Um, okay. Jordan Poole. Hmm. Jordan Poole goes at 75. That seems... Well, it actually seems... Where is he on my list? No, I've actually got him lower than that on ESPN points. Way lower. Interesting. Interesting. After Poole goes Tyler Hero... So I played the game there and Trey Jones got taken away from me. So he's not going to come back around to me. But Wendell is still there. Jabari Smith and Christian Wood and John Collins, they're all still there. John Collins is still there? What? Um, I've still got 18 picks for me, but wow. Why is John Collins still there? Kyle Lowry goes at pick 78. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Christian Wood, who I had at 74, he goes at 80. That's good value. Ah, well, they got uh, Christian Wood, John Collins, Wendell Carter. So my two guys there in Johnny and Wendell both went. So my queue is empty. We'll refresh it in a second. We've still got 14 picks to go until we get back there. Toby Harris, the thick Hogsman, goes at 82. I'm not really sure about that one. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Brandon Clark. I'm bloody sure about that one. Too early for Brandon Clark. What on earth? That is too early. Where, where do I even have Clark? Um, I've got him at 112. Yeah. That's a big year now for me. Uh, Buddy Heald goes to round out round seven, followed by Franz Wagner at pick 85. That's really good, I think, for Franz. I think that's pretty good. Jalen Smith and Jabari Smith still there? Let's just throw them into the queue. Jabari. I just I just went Jabari. Al. Ah, Smitty. Let's do Jalen. Let's throw Jalen into the queue. He's ranked 109th. After Jabari goes Mikhail Bridges. Um, Ananobi? Maybe is this the time I, I actually get OG Ananobi? He's only forward eligible. Well, Jalen Smith just went. Um, sticks. Stand by your man. Okay, so a lot of the guys at the top of my queue have gone now. Brogdon is another guy that I'll be looking at. There goes Kuzma at pick 89. Pick 90 is Wiggins. Wiggins isn't as good as ESPN points leagues. Um, although it's fine at that spot, just because efficiency is important or has more importance anyway over here. Look at OG falling down. I thought to myself, I'm never going to get OG in a draft, but maybe I can. They've got Keegan Murray ranked 67 and Sadiq Bay ranked 69 and Dinwiddie 76. I'm not touching those guys at those spots. Obviously, we're past that spot though. After Wiggins goes Jeremy Grant. Um. Okay, so we're four picks away from me. I've got two in the queue. I'm going to go and update my draft tracker in a second. Just see what other picks get made here. I do need two forward eligible eligible players. Well, there goes Gordon Hayward, who was someone I was looking at, um, but I'm not going to get him now. So I will still take Brogdon if he's available, even though he's not a forward, because I do have utility, but then it's going to force me into a forward. So I really would like um, OG there. All right, let's just update this now that we're only two picks away from me. Update my tracker. After Gordon Haywood, oh, for fuck's sake, it was OG Ananobi um, that went. But what about Scarf? OG. Balenciaga stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. All right, so I'm two picks away. So Brogdon, and I do, then I do need a forward. Um, PJ is probably, well, Keegan Murray just went. So I'm probably going to take PJ and Brogdon, I'm guessing, as my two picks. If Berger doesn't take one of them here. He took Anthony Simons. So that's good. So let's take Brogo, slide into a utility slot, 
And then let's take PJ to slot into my power forward slot. Um, and then Ben Simmons still listed only point guard eligible, which is an L because he's not going to play point guard. And then I've got an open forward slot, which I really do need to address um, probably with yeah, one of my next two picks. Obviously, I'm on the turn. doesn't matter which pick I use. But with my, one of those next two picks, I need to take a forward. Monty Morris should start to go um, soon. So I'm going to throw him into my queue. Draymond, maybe? After Washington, which is what I took, Spencer Dinwiddie went. That was at pick 98. Dinwiddie looks like he's going to come off the bench now. That does cap a little bit of his upside. So while he's okay there, I wouldn't say it was great. Look at Sadiq Bay just hovering there. Clinker Power. Um, yeah, he was at the top of my list. Bay is close to the top here. Cole Anthony, Cam Johnson, uh, I said Monty Morris, the injured guys, Jaron and Jaron and Rob Williams also coming into that spot soon. I, I might consider those players. After Capella goes Gary Trent. Now, Trenner was 80th in ESPN points leagues last season, so it's not a bad spot here. Draymond goes after him at 101. And we're still 18 picks away from mine. Then Suggsy, what do we... No, 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 no. Why, do we, why would we have taken Suggs there? 102, Jan Suggs, knee injury, going to miss the start of the season. Might be two months, might be a month, I don't know. I, I, what? No, 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 no. Sadiq Bay, the depressed penis, and Cole Anthony. I like both of those picks. Those two guys that made them. Whoever you are. Interesting. Yeah, Monty Morris, he, that would be good for me to get, but why is Montrez Harrell at 111? That's what I mean. Like, they're projected off fantasy points. Why is Montrez Harrell there? Oh, there goes Monte. So my queue is now empty. We will refill it later on. After Monte Morris goes Patrick... Okay, so there's a lot of things happening in this draft that I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Why is Patrick Beverly going in round nine? Now, I don't mind Patrick Beverly later in the draft. At round nine, I think you're being silly. I might even take Punch Bob here. Um, Al Horford goes the 11th pick of round nine, 107. And then the Rock DJ, Robbie Williams, goes to um, round out round nine. And Jaden Ivey. Oh, that is early. You want Jaden Ivey as a starter on your fantasy team. I don't think you do, but apparently you do. Um, although it's not massively far off with Ivey. It still is... Or is it? Maybe it is massively far off. Yeah, no, no, no. That's crazy, actually. What am I talking about? That's crazy. What? Ugh. ESPN efficiency matters. Isaiah Jackson goes um, with pick 110. Now, we know that there is upside, even though the upside is smaller in a points league versus a category league, there is still upside there. Get myself a drink while Marcus Smart goes at 111. Wow. Some of these rankings are insane. Why is Boucher at 98? Chris Boucher at 98. Please don't fall for that, anybody. Cameron Johnson, that's that's really a really strong pick, I think. Getting close to me having to look at my um, queue again. Johnson was up the top of my list. So, oh, Jesus, who am I going to get as this forward, man? There is not much. It's going to have to be Punch Bob. Hopefully. Mike Conley goes at 113. Could Portis fall to me? Huh. And then what I think I would do is also take Jaron Jackson, maybe. Um, oh, Portis gone. All right. I don't want Jaron. I'm going to need another forward because I don't want to rely on Jaron to be a forward. But as a bench player, let's just throw him into the queue. Interesting that Rob Williams went ahead of all there. Well, I'm not getting him now. Bobby Portis goes. Harrison Barnes goes. I'm not going to drop the pencil sound because I need to get my picks actually sorted here because I'm up, up in three picks. Nah, I'm lying. It's, Harris, it's the pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. So after Jaron goes Nick Claxton. Um, okay, we're getting into my pick. We're two away. And I don't know who I am going. Josh Hart. Yeah, Josh Hart. is He can be forward eligible. And then... Maybe Aaron Gordon? Where is Aaron Gordon on this list? I know he's not a great category league upside player, but he's totally fine in a points league setting. Dylan Brooksy Brooks goes at 118, and then Mitchie Robinson goes at 119. So that means I will take Josh Hart. He can start for me. I will take Aaron Gordon. He can. What? 
hang on a second. What's the point of that? I'll talk about that in a second. I make a draft pick and then the clock starts running down, but ESPN makes me wait three seconds before I make my selection. Why? All right, so I took Aaron Gordon and Josh Hart, and I'm going to take upside with my last two picks, almost definitely. Let's go back and update my um, draft results so I can tell you who's at the top of my board. Stephen Adams is there. Kelly Olynyk is there. Um, so after Gordon went Malik Beasley, eh, I don't really think so. That doesn't really work for me. Jordan Clarkson's going to come into my queue as well down here. The man on the street himself. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. Um, Markel Fultz went. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Who else is... Brooke Lopez should go. My man Duarte needs to go soon. Let's just do it for the fun of it. Well, it's not even fun. I think it's, he's actually worth it there. I'm going to check. I did say at the start that Jamal Kane wasn't in their list. Oh, look at that. What a shock. Who else isn't in this? Is my man Simone Fontecchio in there? No. Why would he be? He's only been signed for four months. Well, there goes... Uh, after Fultz goes, the big stiffy bones Highland. Then goes Chris Duarte. So I'm not going to be getting him. What other player do they not have? Surely they've got the Santiago Dama. Ah, oh, luckily. F the Fontecchio one's embarrassing. Guys, he was signed in July. And I, but I can't draft him. Kelly Oubre goes over Duarte, then Boyan Bogdanovich, and then the man on the street, Filipino legend, Jordan Clarkson. And now we're getting into the situation where I... Maybe I'm taking Lou Dort? After Clarkson goes Steve Adams, and then Tari Eason. Wow, we're really on the Tari Eason bandwagon in round 11. I really like Tari Eason. He is like, there is still a roadblock in terms of Eric Gordon and Jay Sean Tate in front of him at the moment. And we expect it to be cleared probably at some point, but just be aware of that. After Easton goes a Kongwu, Derek White and Chris Boucher. Wow, hate those picks. Might as well pick Montrez Harrell to go as well. I know we're in round 11, but seriously, Boucher, what are we doing? Let's have a look at something with Christopher Boucher. He was the 192nd ranked ESPN points league player last season. Somehow his situation got better? I don't think so. After Boucher goes Linux, I like it. Levert at pick 135 is pretty good. Got eight picks to go until I can go and finish mine off. Uh, Zubats goes. That's pretty good. Should be pretty happy with that. Marvin, ba ugh, 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 ugh. Marvin Bagley goes at 137. Um, then it goes Johnny Wall, which I don't... Yeah, the flyer is fine. I, I'm not. Re I'm really a little bit down on, on his production this season just because I think it's going to be pretty squishy in, the, in that rotation and he might be off the bench. He might play 24 minutes, but is that enough? I don't know. Um... Uh, all right, we're five picks away. We'll come and update this draft tracker in a sec. Why is this ESPN mock draft taking longer than others? Or is it? Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, no, Lou Dort went. There goes my cue. All right, time to update my draft tracker and see which players I'm going to be targeting with my final two picks. Again, I want some upside here. It's not a ton of upside around, but there is... After Norman Powell goes Elf Stewart... Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. All right, so we're going to take Isaiah Hartenstein with one of the picks. Still this three-second timer. Why do you need to... Oh, Montrez Harrell went. What an L. Um, uh, let's just go ahead and take Hartenstein. And I'm just going to take Vanderbilt Bar with the last pick as well. A little bit of upside in both of those guys, I think, but also enough value to contribute straight off. So that is, oh, look at this. Your roster is now full. Thanks, ESPN. What does, how does that help me to just block out those players? So, honestly. Okay, so after I took Jared Vanderbilt, it went Bogdan Bogdanovich. 
Let's scroll down to the bottom of this list and we can see the picks there. Maybe I should have just done this the whole way through. Look at this. Chris Boucher, 1694 points last season. We expect him to do more. What? Uh, oh, Santi Aldama did go. I didn't even see him go. Interesting. After Bogdanovich goes Wiseman, it goes Baisley. It goes Pokyshevsky. So I should have just kept this screen up for everyone before. Oh, well, you, you had the um, roll of picks on the side there. After, well, Poku there goes at 149. I like Poku, probably a little bit more than Baisley there. Uh, Mo Bamba at 150. Okay. And then we are almost done. After Bumba goes Victor Oladipo. These are yeah, fl obviously fly picks. I really like the Bogdanovich pick here though. Uh, Casey Okpala. I, no, there's absolutely no need for that. Yes, he might start, but honestly, who cares? Absolutely no need, I, I don't think, to draft him. Um, ben Matherin. Old Humpty Dumpty. Hey, do you want to see something funny? You're on this drive. Look at this. I picked Jared Vanderbilt. Projected points, zero. Zero. He is a Utah Jazz starter. Zero. Obi Toppin goes at 154. Like, I mean, cool. Why? Alex Caruso at 155. No worries. I am sorry. Why is Jared Vanderbilt projected with zero points? Casey Okpala also projected. I can understand not projecting Okpala for any points. Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt. Is this is there two Jared Vanderbilts and I I've picked the wrong one. And the final pick is get off share this pick you share it my ass. Kevin Herter goes with the final pick. Now is there any other stupid projected points that don't have him here? Santi Aldama has zero projected points. Cool stuff. Um, anyone else got any of those silly ones where there's no no projections? No, they're just the ones. That Vanderbilt one is wild. What? So, look at... They've got Vanderbilt ranked 910th. Uh, so, just a reminder, if you want Jared Vanderbilt... So, I, I could say, yeah, I drafted him just to tell you. You've got to go down, scroll down and, and get him. I didn't. Um, but that is insane. What? Are, what? Okay. That is the draft done. Um, yeah, my team projected on top because it's using my projections, which is fine. Then Galloway, Pope, NYC, Lovo, Valcourt, Hendricks, Vice City, Lads, Yoshi, Puppy... Berger, Cordero, and Tran. Guys, that will do it for an ESPN mock draft. Hopefully, I never have to go back on that system again. Follow me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app here on YouTube. You thumb it up and you drop your comments down below. My guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.